waterfowl hunting is awesome, but it's even more wonderful with the dog there to share it with. For me, it's not complete without the retriever. And that's one reason why we do what we do. There's just something about the dog being there that matters. If you had told me when I was 18 years old, at some point during my life there would be eight years that I didn't hardly get to hunt any because I was in the Army, I probably would have laughed in your face. But, you know, it was hard. I didn't hunt just a whole lot. I hunted when I could. I just You try to focus your time around your family because there's a lot of people that just don't get to see their families. Uh, never left home much. I'd stayed, worked on a farm my whole life. Decided I was going to see what I could do for my country. When I joined the Army, I was just single, barrel-chested, freedom fighters, what some people would call it. Uh, I stayed stateside for about two years. My first duty station was my first deployment. We went to Missoula, Iraq, 2009-10. We were one of the last uh, combat units to be in Iraq before we pulled out. A total of three deployments in Iraq, Afghanistan twice. Army sniper with his unit and he's guiding now in the wintertime he is he guides over in East Arkansas and, I, and he didn't have a dog <laughs> You build a relationship with the men that you've been in war with and the men that you've been stationed with. It's just kind of, it's unbreakable, it really is. And then it's hard as well leaving that, coming back home, and just knowing that you'll probably never see those friends that you made again. Marty come along and I met Marty and, and then he introduced me to Mont. It's just, you know, I got a love for that dog that I couldn't really explain. Like he's, he picked up some broken pieces that we had that I needed as a, you know, as a person. I feel like Mont's been a, there for my family when we needed him. He's been really good to us. Something I really like about Mont is he can turn on a snap of his fingers. I can go with him from our session in the evenings on training. Early in the mornings, he'll do everything he's supposed to do. Mont. The water probably feels good. You know, even being he's our work dog, he's part of a family dog too. He spends more time with us. You know, yeah. he just don't go to the kennel and stay and then stay and work and work. I feel like at five years old, Mont's everything you could ask for in a dog. Back. Ashley. 
actually can come out there with a tennis ball. She can pick him up, go out in the yard with bumpers and do everything that he needs to do. Mont looks at her just like he does me. That's the good thing about him. He don't just listen to one person. I feel like Wyatt, he enjoys going to hunt with Mont more than he enjoys going to hunt with me. Just because it's a little boy and this dog, you know, he knows it. Mont listens to him too, and he just feels like he's part of the hunt. Mont loves Wyatt, Wyatt loves him. It's just, I feel like I'm able to watch Mont and Wyatt grow up together. And I feel like that's what kids need. They need that dog in their life. And so I can see the love that Wyatt has for Mont too, and it just, I mean, it's all complete. We'll take Mont with us. We don't take him, that's the first thing somebody asks. They say, where's Mont at? You know, I feel like they don't even care about seeing me. They just want to see the dog. But he's become such a part of the family because you don't ever know he's there. Mont knows how to, to come in, be quiet, sit still somewhere. And I was just so pleased with that. You got rice? A little Thank you all for that. Thank you very much. Whoever made it. Lucky day, lucky day, my friend. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It seems like the first day I met Mont, he was part of me. Like we should, we've been together ever since he was born, you'd thought. I don't know how many times I've sent Mont and I swore that he wasn't going to come back with it and here he pumps over a log and he's got the duck in his mouth, you know. Same way on our goose fields, we've got fields, a lot of them rice bumps up to a bean field. This year, we had a bird that went down. Bird was still alive. I didn't even send the dog after him. Marty looks over at me, so let's send Mon after him. One hand signal, you know, stopped him at 300 yards and sent him the rest of the way. Here comes Mont busting through the bushes with a speck in his mouth. I just can't get enough of that dog. I have to brag on him. Stuttgart's really dear to my heart. Um, I figure it was probably in 2001, that's when I graduated, that I started coming to hunt Arkansas. Being it is Stuttgart, there's just so much history here in this town. You could be at anywhere else and they go, it's just part of Arkansas. But Stuttgart seems to stick in everybody's mind where you go hunting. They said Stuttgart, you go, oh, it's that place. You know, there's history here that people have no idea about. All they care about is the duck hunting. But if you'd actually come into the Duck Museum here in town, uh, where we're at today for letting us film here, come into the town, check out the history a little bit about it. It's just a good deal here. I enjoy it. There's a lot of ducks in other parts of Arkansas, but I just feel like here's home. A uh, few times during the summer, I'll come up here and I'll help Zach. You make that Mont's there and he's ready to work. This is a deep well, and uh, one of our relists and stuff for low on water, we use these. It pulls the water up out of the ground. We have several miles of under, underground pipelines. 
and uh, all you do is it has a riser head. You'll open the riser head and put your riser lid on it and it'll feed your poly pipe. You poke the holes, just a flat piece of plastic pipe and when you put the water in it, it swells up and you take a little hole poker and you start poking holes in it. That's how we irrigate our rice, we irrigate our beans, we row crop all our beans and levy water all our rice. You think I got enough pods on it? Uh, nobody wants to get out there and fight cotton mouse all day long in a rice field. It's just not something everybody wants to do. But it's just part of it. If you're going to have a good time in the winter, you know, you're going to, you've got to do your hard work in the summer. Mont, you wouldn't know outside of them 60 days that Mont was a duck dog. He lays on his back. He wants to lay in the back of the truck and he don't like leaving the air conditioner. But if you try to leave him at home, he's upset at you for two days after that. You know, he likes to go with me everywhere I go. We go to the farm, he'll, he'll go around, he'll water in the rice fields. You know, he has a good time. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 117 pods on one plant. Sounds good. Yeah. He'll probably go 90 bushels. Yeah. Just kind of gives you an idea how what it's all, what it's supposed to do. Whatever makes the birds come. Yeah. If I did have a service dog, I figure Mont's my service dog. Because you see a lot of people that still hunt, but when hunting season comes, that dog's no longer a part of them. That dog can't go out with them where they go. So, Mont's with me every day. When you see how many people likes it. They want to come out here and they work. Everybody wants a duck hunt. Nobody wants to come and work, though. It's always been that way, though. It won't ever change. You got people like Zach, though. That's what makes it happen. This reservoir, we use this as irrigation. You can see the pump. We pump this water out, out of the reservoir to use to irrigate the crops. And our neighbors right next to us are building one right now. So you can see what this one looks like. It's been here for several years. And then you can see what, what the process of building a new one is like. It's a lot of long hours and big machinery. It got to where he was one of the main guide services around that was hunting specs at the time. I wanted to go with him more, and he said, man, I'm getting more clients. He said, I don't have a lot of time. And I said, well, I want to go hunting. He said, well, you're just going to have to come work for me. So, man, we've known each other for five years. And about four years ago is when I started, you know, full time with him in the evenings after I'd get done duck hunting, I'd go and I'd meet up with him. And I just try to show my help, you know, help where I can, do what I can do, and just to make our guide service that much better. And Zach sees that, and, and I think I feel like we're growing. Everything I'd ever believed about hunting timber at the time, you know, about having a black dog kind of went away because I was, I was falling more in love with Mont. Mont was everything you could ask for. You'd forget he was on a stand or in the blind way if you didn't turn around and know that you had a dog there. Some of the days we hunt, it's slow. I mean, sunshine or not, it's just not gonna have a push of ducks or somebody, they've moved over some night. Uh, freeze, we can't get enough water going through, it's freeze, which some of the days is over in 15 minutes, some of the days we're there banging it out till lunchtime. You don't ever know. And the good thing about Mon is he don't know 
that if it's a five minute hunt, a 15 minute hunt, or a four hour hunt, Mark's gonna stay there on the stand. He's not gonna lay down. He's ready. He's up in the air looking at ducks. Uh, we'll laugh about it, he'll be looking the other way. You hit the safety monster ready to go. He's looking up, he knows something's fixing to happen. Duck calls, he'll start watching this side, you know. Uh, Mont never gives up. He's gonna sit there and watch. If you stay out there, he's gonna stay out there. Everybody loves him. Everybody that duck hunts from Mont, they go, hey, there's that dog that don't whine on the stand. You know, that's the one you never know is back there. You don't even have to stand beside him. Mont's there and he's ready to work. Uh, we just been really lucky to have such a good dog like that. And I was, I'm pleased with Marty because he knew exactly what dog I needed. Over. We have a good time hunting, but he also is a perfect dog in my house. He's good to my wife, he's good to my kids, he's always there. I feel like if I didn't have him, he always keeps me busy. He always keeps me cheered up. And, you know, without him, I don't know if some of the things I could have got through. So this week, we're gonna talk about pros and cons, males versus females. And every week I get calls about this. Uh, so I thought we would address this and give people some ideas, buddy. It's a personal choice. That's what I tell people. There's good and, and there's bad with both. You need to look at the line, you need to you know, look at the parents, whether you want male or female. Uh, what I tell people is if you're gonna hunt big geese, Canada geese, the big ones, I would probably choose a male if it were me. Uh, if somebody hunts around ice a lot, uh, really tough, tough conditions, you might consider a male over a female. Not that some females can't do it, but it is something that is a real, you know, uh, problem to deal with. Not everybody in the country has that problem. In the south, there are a lot of boat hunters. Uh, a lot of those guys like females because they're easier to get in and out of the boat. Both males and females for waterfowl hunting, if they come from good bloodlines, have more than you know should have more than enough uh, drive. Uh, males don't necessarily have any more than females, uh, and vice versa. Another thing you have to consider with females are heat cycles. If somebody is going to spay a female, we recommend that you wait until after the second heat cycle. This is debatable. We like to make sure that they've had all their growth hormones, their bone density uh, is good, and their, especially their joints have formed and shaped like they need to. If we, if we neuter them or spay them too soon, there's a greater likelihood that that's not gonna take place. With males, we personally believe in leaving them intact. We think just like a professional athlete, uh, if you neutered a professional athlete, they're probably not gonna perform as well as one uh, that's been left intact so we consider these professional athletes so I guess in the end performance for the most part is going to be similar a fast female is nice a strong male is nice depending on what your needs are boat hunters you know females would probably be a better choice if you're actually hunting out of the boat a lot uh, if you're hunting big geese 
I'd probably go with the male. Look at your needs. Uh, look at the parentage. Don't just pick up the paper and just go pick one up. Really study the bloodlines. Just make a list of the things that you want in a dog and then go out and find it. Uh, you know, this we, we live in a country that's full of uh, waterfowlers that are raising great dogs and uh, it's not going to be hard to find a good one. Just take your time. It doesn't matter, male or female. Make you a list of what you want and then go out and find it.